Rock climbing is a sport in which participants climb up or across natural rock formations or artificial rock walls. The goal is to reach the summit of a formation or the end point of a predefined route without falling. Rock climbing involves many different body systems, but the three main body systems include the respiratory system, the muscular system, and the circulatory system. The circulatory system is an organ system that passes nutrients, gases, hormones, and blood cells to and from cells in the body to help fight diseases and help stabilize body temperature and pH to maintain homeostasis. The muscular system is the anatomical system of the species that allows it to move. The muscular system in vertebrates is controlled through the nervous system. Although some muscles, such as the cardiac muscles, can be completely autonomous. In humans and other animals, the anatomical features of the respiratory system include airways, lungs, and the respiratory muscles. Molecules of oxygen and carbon dioxide are passively exchanged by, diffus by diffusion between the gaseous external environment and the blood. This exchange process occurs in the alveolar region of the lungs. A rock climber must have a very good center of gravity while balancing on footholds and keeping their body held in positions that are out of the ordinary. Because, rock, because climbing for a while not only deters you physically, it also, it also is a mental beating that requires a very high mental toughness, as enduring uncomfortable holds and awkward positions is all part of the sport. Hello. What's up, Gavin? How's it um, going? So we're just here interviewing Gavin, and we wanted him to know like why, what draws him to rock climbing, and why he like enjoys it so much, and things like that. Well, I enjoy rock climbing mostly for the places it takes you and the people you meet. But other than that, in a physiological sense, I enjoy it because you get yoked, <laughs> but and your adrenaline kicks in all the time, constantly. Every day you go climbing. You just feel this rush, and it feels great. Rock climbing also uses your circulatory system to regulate the climber's heart rate and blood pressure. Climbers tend to have a dis disproportional rise in heart rate and use maximum oxygen consumption. This is because the majority of the time you are using static moves, which produce a much higher heart rate because you are constantly exercising an isometric hand grip and the other part of the time you do dynamic moves which enhance circulation keeping your heart rate steady in climbing your arms for the most part are above your head which increases the heart rate and the heart rate may also increase with psychological stress like fear of falling or anticipation of falling the muscular system is probably the most important system of rock climbing Muscles get energy through breaking down nutrients, such as electrolytes and sugars. The muscles send signals to break down glycogen to give the muscle the necessary power to make a move from handhold to handhold. The broken down glycogen is sent into the bloodstream. Although the continuous strain is diminishing the ATP reserve and, increase, and increases the amount of lactic acid buildup, the muscle tries to pour unwanted waste into the bloodstream. The actual muscles in the muscular system work by holding onto the bone and contracts together, pulling bones together, creating movement. All right, what are some of the different like moves that you do in rock climbing, and like what muscle groups do they use? Uh, you you use a lot of forearm muscles, so because that affects your grip strength. It um you use a lot of tendons and ligaments, which are extremely important to all climbing throughout your, your upper body and use a lot of back muscles so you can pull and what are the different types of um, the different types holds. of holds well there are open handed holds and the different types of open handed holds are crimps well, crimping is where you basically just pull really hard down and wrap your thumb over your fingers and it's, it's not necessarily very healthy for your tendons and ligaments, but it provides the most grip strength of any of your holds, really. Um, the healthiest way to grab a hold is open hand, because it it puts very little force on your tendons and more on your muscular, like your uh, skeletal system. And um, 
different types of holes besides crimps and the different variations of crimps, which include open hand, are pinches, where it's a very natural way to hold something. You just pinch it really hard. There are let's see, slopes where you pretty much you're not really using too much pull strength. It's more about your body technique, like how your body is relative to your hand position. Um, more holds, I think. Crimps, slopes, pinches. Like under cling. There are under cling motion where you pretty much you're pulling most of your biceps into it. These are your biceps, right? Yeah. yeah you're putting most of your bicep strength into it. Um, what are they like? What else is there? Oh yeah, and there's crack climbing, which is a totally different way, style of climbing, which is really difficult. I don't really know how to do it. As you can see, this is three and a half weeks old. Um, it's pretty gnarly. And basically with cracks, you have to use, I forget the term, you're gonna have to look it up on the internet. It's a tension, or so you have to squeeze your body into cracks in walls or rock, and squeeze really hard, and your skin and your muscle expand when you squeeze. So you squeeze your, in, your hand in when it's not, expanded and then you squeeze really hard and that keeps you on the wall and then you do the same thing with the rest of your body and it's really difficult. Like Gavin was saying, there are two types of moves, static, which is controlled climbing, and dynamic, also known as dyno, which uses momentum to reach those hard to reach spots. So dynamic moves require lots of oxygen to throw the body through the air and that takes lots of strength and aerobic capacity. It's also very scary because your body is completely removed from the rock face. When you do physically demanding moves like this, your heart rate and breathing increases as well, which requires more oxygen. After a workout at the, at the rock climbing gym, the climber will generally have a slight fatigue. This, this depends on the intensity throughout the workout. The climber's breathing rate and heart rate should, should have returned to about normal. The muscle tears throughout your body should be repairing themselves by the use of protein, amino acids, and nutrition acquired from the previous meal. Your body system should be back to normal. You should be repairing any damages caused while climbing. So now you probably have a pretty good understanding of rock climbing and the basic body systems that it uses. Now the next step is for you to get out there, give it a try. You should go to your local climbing gym and take a class, or if you know an experienced climber, have them take you out for a day. Whatever the path you choose, you will probably know if climbing is the sport for you pretty quickly. And remember, always climb safe, climb fun, and climb hard.